All right, everybody, welcome back. So here I bought a 2011 Chevy Equinox, uh, 99,000 miles on it. The transmission failed on the previous owners. So I'm gonna show you guys a video on how to, without a lift or a dealership involved, get all the suspension out and pull the transmission out the side. It's, it's you know, this is an all wheel drive one, so it does have a transfer case, but um, yeah. It's not too bad, just takes a little bit of time, but stay tuned and you're gonna see how that's done. So this will probably be at least two to three part video on how to do this, uh, cause there's a fair amount involved to try to fit all into one video. So this one, the problem with this car is it quit going. Uh, the woman was driving it down the road. It quit moving forward. No reverse, no drive, no gears. It's your standard wave plate failure, which is I wouldn't say uncommon but is common for these cars and you'll see that when I take the transmission apart um, I'll show you those parts as well so don't forget to subscribe there's always links down in the description um, on stuff that I feel will help you guys so make sure you check that out as well and let me know what you think so I hope you guys enjoy and I hope this helps you let's dive into it All right guys, well we got it back into the shop here and we're gonna start taking stuff off. So I took this cover off here, um, this cover on top of here, just push that little tab, it slides off to the side. That's where I realized I have a big frame hanging out in here. I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna get the batteries underneath that in this little tray. And I'm just gonna get stuff out of the way here so I can reach down in there and get to the transmission. Cause it's right down there. Uh, very easy to get to, but before I put it up on jack stands and everything's really tall, I'm going to kind of do what I need to do on the top. So get uh, that stuff done and we'll be back. So yep, three there, one in here. Oh, there's a clip on this AC line and then it looks like it'll pull out. Pile of parts is growing here and it's only been 10 minutes, but... So there's the transmission. Here's everything out of the way here. Um, this will just make it nicer to be able to grab bell housing bolts and whatever else I need to get my hands on from in here. Shifter linkage, you know, stuff like that. But um, for the most part, we really need to get underneath this baby and start making some sense of what we got to do down there. So that'll be the next step. Get this thing as high as I can because that's got to come out the bottom. The engine will be staying in the car. I'm not going to drop them at the same time. Um, but we got to take like the four wheel drive system off because this one's all wheel drive. Um, the drive shafts, axle shafts, a bunch of stuff. So there's a lot of work to be done underneath. So the top part was easy. So stay tuned for the fun. I made the executive decision to take out. There was that piece was in here so it bolted here went down and up and held this kind of fuse block in the way of everything i figured you know if we since we're going to have to take you know the bolts out of that and whatever else down here it'd be nice to have it out of the way um, taking it apart was kind of a pain in the butt for the first time um, so there's clips on the side there's four of these that you got to push away and then that top piece will come off um, there's a ton of things that just clip into um, that thing, just wires. Um, you'll probably have to take this loose, which is where your positive jumper is for the battery. And uh, don't take these out unless you have to because they take the plugs out of the bottom of this fuse thing. And, and maybe you can and just pull those out and get the whole thing out of the way, I don't know. I'm gonna leave it here because I think I can fish around enough to get to what I need to. But time will tell. This was the cover that was on here, right? That goes up through there, so take all that off. So I'm just kind of removing things I think that are going to hinder the process later um, while they're easy to get to here, so yeah. All right, we got her jacked up here. So for the jack, I just put underneath the front this cross member here. Jacks I put down under here. 
uh, piece of wood to get a little bit extra height and a little more surface area. Starting to take this corner loose. So the caliper I took loose, took the brake lines off of here. I've got these two bolts loose. Um, sway bar bushing here or control link here. Um, you can see the caliper, I used a piece of wire and I just tied it up, not on the brake line, but it's on the mount here. Should be plenty strong, not gonna hurt anything, so you don't want that just hanging loose, it'll wreck everything. Um, so the wheel speed sensor that goes down in here, I took it out. I figured that was the easiest way. Came out pretty easy, that's just hanging here. Um, so I don't have a socket for this. Oh, is it 35 millimeter or something like that? It's a big boy. Um, once I get that loose, then pretty much this side is almost done. So once I get that loose, I can take this off here and tip this down, pull the axle out, and then the axle will come out of the transmission. Um, then I got to repeat the process for the other side. But the point here is we're going to drop this subframe underneath. And I've got a deal to hold the uh, tr engine up in place. We'll get to that later. But uh, for right now, it's where we're at. So I'm kind of taking everything loose where I need to, to drop basically the suspension and the subframe off. You can see the steering box right there and right above it. It's got a bolt in the steering. So I'll just take that loose there. And that'll come off. And not too bad. A few things here and there. But um, I think it's going to be pretty painless. So fingers crossed that it is. So we'll be back. All right, passenger side here. Got the caliper off, two bolts. Got these bolts loose here for the strut. Here's how you take this loose for that um, sway bar mount. You just gotta put a wrench on there. Looks like 18 and then you gotta have a metric Allen. So you just put it in the middle there and then you can crank that. And yeah. That's really all it takes for this side as well. Same as the other side. Still got to go get that big socket. And I can pull axles and then whatever else I need to to drop this um, lower support member. All right, back at it. So in order to hold the engine up, I'm going to have to put um, one of these bars across here with a chain. So we've got to pull this off uh, the top of the engine. So. You got a clamp here, you got this hose here that just pulls out, and then down here there's another clamp that went down on the throttle body, and then that thing just pops off in the back, just pops onto those. Next thing I'm gonna do is pull that off. Looks like it should just pull off, and then I'll have the motor um, opened up so that I can hook my crossbar on it to hold it in place. All right, so this engine cover, it just simply pulls up off of there, but you do um, have to take the oil fill cap off first because this goes through there, kind of holds it in place. But other than that, now she's free and I can figure out how the heck I'm going to hold this thing up with my engine bar. I think I can leave this motor mount on and then I'll have a chain on this side holding it up so that when I pull the subframe underneath and that transmission loose, um, it's just going to kind of hang there. Okay, we're draining the transmission fluid. Got this jug here full, that one's filling, but there's just this little tiny bolt on the bottom of that pan, or on the bottom of that transmission right there. It looks like this guy. You pull that out and let her drain. Just make it that much lighter and easier to deal with later. Plus, it's way easier to drain it now than it is when they're sitting on a bench or whatever, right? So, try to make the least amount of mess as possible. The transfer case, because this is an all-wheel drive one, I don't think I'm gonna have to deal with taking the fluid out of that one because I'm pretty sure it's sealed. So once we drain this, then we'll uh, start taking that other stuff off. There's a little clip here that holds this plastic guard on. Take it off. Um, these other ones, I guess I could take the rest of them off, but there's nothing really I need to do in there, I don't think at this point. We'll see later. Um, the steering there, I got the bolt out and I marked where it goes. That looks like it'll come off pretty easy, the steering shaft. Piece of cake. Next thing I decided to take off is this crossbar thing here. It's just like a 13 millimeter. There's two on each side. Not in there very tight. Comes off pretty easy. And then I'm going to worry about the drive line and the transfer case. Okay, so that flange there is a bunch of little 8 millimeter bolts. These guys here, 
But in order to get that that to come out, if you see there, it's got that big bump on it that goes in there. In order to get that to come out, you gotta come back here and take this two-piece driveline carrier loose here. So there's two bolts that can drop to the ground. Then there'll be enough slack to get that um, coupling fitting out of the back of the transfer case. Okay, so I took this thing here off. Get that out of the way, because you need to take the shield off of the exhaust manifold down there. And there's a couple, few bolts in it. There's one there, one over there, one there. Because um, you got to get to the connection to drop the little pipe that goes from the exhaust manifold down under to the exhaust to get the um, four-wheel drive transmission part out. So you got to do it from the top. And that bracket was just in the way, so I took it out. So now I'm going to disconnect um, that sensor there and then take the bolts out and get that shield out of the way. Okay, I got that off. That was not bad, but not fun. Two of the three bolts broke off, so that should be great to put back on. So now you see down here, we got three bolts for the exhaust. Oops, one there, one there, one there. I put a little bit of breaker free knocker loose on it. Let that soak for a little bit and see if they come off without breaking, hopefully. Okay, so as you can see down here, this pipe's gotta come off to get this transmission piece out that drives the rear end, so really no way around it. All right, so we're at this point. I had to take the exhaust manifold off because I could not get the um, that catalytic pipe deal there to go anywhere because down here, which you can't see, let me see if I can get a light on it. Because right down here is a bolt that goes to a bracket that goes down underneath, so that won't fit down there. But you can't get to that, but this has to come off to get to these bolts. That's what holds the transmission in over there. Um, I know these are made to drop the engine and tranny at the same time, but what a pain in the ass. <laughs> anyway, so the exhaust manifold has a bunch of bolts in it. Kind of an odd deal, and it's kind of fun to fish out of there, but it's not too bad. So, I don't know why they made it so ridiculously big on the ends here. but So, that's where we're at now. Trying to get that little, trying to get that exhaust manifold, the catalytic converter deal out, um, so I can get to those transmission bolts. Once I can get to all that stuff, and also that catalytic converter has to come out in order to get the subframe down. So you're doing it in frame so to speak like this this is what you got to do if you guys know how to get that cat out without having to take this off by all means I'm all ears I look through every video and post I can't find anything on it all right there it is all that work just for one flipping bracket so you can get that stupid thing out of there but I won I got it out of there thank goodness throw this in the pile of garbage here not garbage. It's got to go back on. Is there a gasket on there? Must be one of some sort. Let's go down there. And you got to kind of slowly fish it out of there. There's the bracket that came out and the bolt. But yeah, you need this hole opened up. There you can see where it went. Now, hopefully it'll be smooth sailing. Now we can pull axles and transmissions and other stuff so that was the biggest hurdle I've been kind of sweating on for a while so now this transmission come out two bolts on the bottom three on the top and uh, pull that axle out first and then that will slide off now the way okay there's the top three transmission bolt or uh, transmission four-wheel drive transmission part of the bolt so the short one goes in there and then the long other two go or one goes there and there I got that rear bracket mount out. I don't know if that thing's free now. No, not really. Something else must be holding it in, or maybe it just needs a good pop to get loose. We'll have to see, but uh, maybe that just comes off with it. But there's a few more bolts. There's another bolt there I gotta get out. And a few more things. Once we get this thing out, we'll kind of break it down. There's the bottom two right here that I haven't taken out yet, so kind of going to save those for last and see how it goes so yeah we're getting there it's a lot of fun 
Okay, the reason it wouldn't come out is there's four bolts in this thing. Well, three on the top here, right? I missed that one. Two, three, four, there's a lot of bolts. There's four there. And then it goes up and around the, uh, goes around the rear mount. So you gotta kind of wiggle it up and around and then back, it'll come back down through this hole. Another thing, this thing here has to come off. That's holding the transmission in place as well. Just take that bolt there out. That was the one that exhaust bracket bracket went to. So I got that one out. Oh, look, there's another one. Better get that one. Then once I get that uh, drive shaft out, there's another one down there too. Sneaky, sneaky. All right, went over to the passenger side, took the nut off pounded it back through, kind of dropped everything here. There's a little washer, get that washer situated. This washer goes there. Anyways, where are you looking at? There we go. So this is on there. There's kind of a little keeper that makes it hard to get off. So I got underneath with a pry bar and kind of pried on it and that made it come loose. So now this axle is off. So now I can get this remaining bottom bolt out here. And then this end is free. And then as far as I can tell, it's just the bottom three or bottom two bolts in that transmission or the, what would I call it? The rear wheel drive transmission thing should come off. Transfer case, I guess would be it. So that should be the next step, hopefully. All right, once you get that bottom bolt loose, then that piece there will come off. that. Okay, got my trusty Harbor Freight transmission jack on here. Got the bolts out. You can see it's coming apart here. A little bit of prying and it's going to be there. I just put this on for some safety, but I see it might be hindering me because it hits everything. It's kind of a tight spot down here, but at least, you know, I could put it down below it and kind of help keep everything. I don't know how heavy that is, if I can lift it or bench press it. I mean, it doesn't look like much, but you don't really know until it's too late. You don't want to drop it on yourself when you're working alone, right? So I'm just going to kind of keep getting a little pry bar in there and wiggle it apart. And then that thing will be out. Success. We got her out, guys. Wasn't bad once you get all the other junk out of the way. So let's just kind of go into that slot a little bit. And then you can kind of pivot it this way and then drop her down. Um, not going to lie, this uh, tranny jack definitely was a lifesaver. I will link to that down below in the description with everything else. Let's get this out of the way. It'll clear here. <laughs> okay, so there's what that looks like. Not much to it. That's kind of a big hurdle to getting the rest of the stuff out of here. So, ouch. Good, good, good. Makes me happy. Here you see you got a tranny bolt, tranny bolt. Um, yeah, but the subframe has to come out of the way next. I accidentally shut off the video, but yeah, the subframe has to come out next. So I got to get a support to hold the engine up and transmission while we pull that. So I'll unbox that and have that in a separate video if you're interested in that as well. But um, yeah, good progress today. Okay, now we're just taking stuff loose. So I took the shield off of get the right way here. I took the shield off of here so I could get to a plug up here on the end of the power steering thing. Um, there's this wire here that goes onto the back of the power. It flows into this big plug and that goes way up there. You see it loose up there. Well, it went way up there to that bolt way up there. So ground of some sort. I'm um, just popping stuff loose. So there's another wire here that runs up on top of the transmission. I hope unplugs from there. And we're really close. I'm going to pull this front mount loose and pull this axle out of this side and then hold the uh, transmission up. I think we're pretty close to taking it free. The subframe, that is. So we got mounts, bolts here, bolts back here. 
bolts here and here, and I think that subframe's gonna come off. So, um, yeah, I'll do another double check of wires, and I think we're good, and then I'm gonna put some two by fours on a jack and drop that thing down and see what happens. All right, here it is installed. I think this is gonna work for what I'm gonna do. Um, I found a bolt on the end here and I put a little piece of chain on it. And I went up, cranked it up, because this motor's suspended on this end with a pretty good mount um, that I don't think is gonna let it very, very far. Um, I've got this bar here to kind of keep it from twisting. Hopefully that works there. I could have done it over here, but it's so long, it kind of hits the hood there. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'll have a jack underneath the transmission, or the engine anyways, probably. But um, for right now, we're gonna pull the subframe out. But just kind of show you guys. So I didn't put it on the fender here. I put it here on the actual unibody. It seemed like a really good spot. Um, way stronger than putting it on that fender piece. So in this case, that's where that would go. Show you the other side here. So yeah, once we get the engine dangling, we'll come back. Okay, so oddly enough, this thing here is that other line that comes from, you can see it snakes down. I pulled that one out, goes down there. Looks to me, you see way down there, that's the other one that goes to that rack and pinion. It's just a ground or something here. So we'll take it off here and it's got one connection down there then that'll be free. Um, yeah, I got that front bolt out. So the engine's just kind of hanging there in transmission. It's pretty free, hanging on this mount and the other mount and this thing here. So it doesn't seem to be too bad so far, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, same deal here, pulled the remaining bolt out. Um, that, I used a brass hammer once I took the nut off and beat on this to get it through um, out of the hub here. Don't lose your little washer. And then a pry bar from underneath to pry the axle out of the transmission. Come, oh, I'm gonna have to pull on it a little more underneath there. I thought maybe it was gonna be loose enough, but that's it and it'll pop out. Okay, here's about how we redneck uh, that support out of there. So I got my tranny jack on the front. So that's coming down nicely, as you can see. Cake, then floor jack on the back coming down good too double check the wires so I mean these bolts these were tight they're 18 millimeter my half inch impact wouldn't touch them I had to uh, put a pretty big breaker bar on them to pop them loose but once I got them loose no problem don't forget your steering shaft there um, the back mounts there um, all these big bolts were tight I'd use a breaker bar um, but the little ones on these back brackets that had three bolts, they were loose, came off easy. But this is working great. So, yeah, as far as I can tell, everything's free. I'm gonna double check and drop this to the ground and pull it out. And uh, it'll be on to figuring out how to get that tranny loose. All right, so down as far as the jacks will go, I'll just pull it out. Should be a piece of cake. I'll probably just pull the jacks out from under it and then slide it out of there because that's the only way I'm gonna be able to do it without a lift here, but man, a lot of hours, but not too hard. You're not doing this in this whole swap in one day. Maybe a mechanic that's done this a couple times with a lift, you could probably do it, but me, no. Just an overview so you can kind of see what's all going on here. So steering shaft, a couple grounds for that thing and just lots of other stuff. Hey, hey. Okay, with that subframe out, we got lots of access to the transmission here. Now well, it's kind of tight in here, hard to get to, to show you. But see, we got a couple tranny bolts here. We gotta disconnect the linkage and stuff up on top of there yet, but here's the backside of your engine. Just the two motor mounts here and on the front holding this whole assembly up. Um, So pretty sure, gosh, hitting rocks all over the place here. So this doesn't have to come off. The starter I do believe does, because I think that's how you get to the flex plate volts for the converter. And I think there's only three or something of those. So I figure out how to get the starter off. And uh, I want to get that off, get the converter bolts loose, 
Then we'll worry about cracking this loose and taking it off and the stuff on the top. So we're getting really close. Okay, there's a starter. Got a bowl on the top, use a long, long extension. You can come in from the back and get it. One plug, these two wires here. So yep, you gotta get in through that hole, get these converter bolts out. Um, you can just use a screwdriver, catch a ring gear, and just kind of move things as you need to. But I'm gonna get a um, impact on that, take those converter bolts out, and yeah, we're cruising right along. Okay, there it is. I took a paint pan and made a mess of it just so I know where it goes. Not that it matters, it probably doesn't, but I do it anyways. So yeah, there's just three of them, 18 millimeter, short little guys. It's like they had Loctite on them. I just used the impact with the wobbly and stuck it in there and used a screwdriver to rotate around the next one. So I'm gonna take some of these bottom um, bell housing bolts loose and get a couple jacks under here, probably one under the motor, one under the tranny and start getting ready to do the removal. Okay, we're back up top. So the shifter linkage here, so you've got two bolts here we're gonna take loose, then we'll pop that off there. What else we got? I've got that motor mount, but we're gonna do that last. Um, we've got some coolant lines here. So there's a bolt here in this one, and that other one runs around, I believe, to another one. So those are gonna be messy. And then we've got a wire here that's hooked here, here, and just has an easy disconnect connector down here. And there's two transmission bolts at the top, one down here and one down here. And then I think we're pretty close. I don't see much else connected, so I just may have this on the floor today yet. So I've done most of this work in one day. Makes me feel pretty good. Okay, I got this top one here we're coming loose. And this other one back here had a nut. It's on a stud, and then there's a ground or something connected to that. And then underneath that, you see there'll be another nut. So. That should be the last transmission bolt, other than the one I left in in the bottom. So, yeah, we're getting close. Okay, we got that back transmission cooler line um, capped off. I shoved a piece of oops, towel in the hole. Put the nut back on there so I don't lose that. Um, up top here, we'll go ahead and have a look at what we did here. So, same deal. Got these cool, um, I'll try to put a link to them in the description as well, little clamps, and then cap that hole off. Um, everything up here is good to go. I think I got just this one top motor, or uh, bell housing bolt there, two bell housing bolts, or uh, mount bolts there, and then I've just got the one uh, bell housing bolt in the bottom. So, I'm gonna get my floor jack underneath the, the engine, my tranny jack under the tranny, and uh, kind of see what we can make happen here. All right, we got all the bolts out and motor mount bolts out. As far as I can tell, everything is loose. Uh, if you look down in there, you can see she's coming apart. So I think I just gotta get the right angle of the tranny and it'll slide off. So yeah, yeah, here we go. Here's what we got going on down here. So a little safety under the engine. And then the transmission here, I put a ratchet strap around to hold it in place. And yeah, we got a gap. Come on, focus thing. Okay, she's coming. one line. What's it doing here? Oh, it's just, just coming down with it. All right, as far down as the tranny jack goes. Now what? Oh yeah, I get that right off the wheel well here. Sweet. There it is down there. Okay, here she comes. situating here around there. Got to do use both hands so I'll get it around that way and then she'll be out. There it is. She's out. Now don't let the converter fall off. It'll make a mess but that's all that's to it. Took me one 
most of one day to get it out. Well, two, two probably half days. But uh, I didn't work on it all day today, and last time I didn't work on it all day either. So in a weekend, you could have it out pretty easily without getting up early and going to bed late. But now, the big gaping hole in the car. Now we can figure out what's going on here. My forward and reverse failed. I'm going to take this apart before I buy another one so I can see if I can figure out what the deal is, if I can fix it myself or not. So that'll be coming up in the next video. So like, comment, subscribe, put the links down below in the description. Let me know what you think. Here's the mess we got. Kind of excited to get this car together and drive it. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Stay tuned for part two. We'll be either fixing or swapping and then part three, we'll be putting it back in. Thanks for stopping by.